Hello and welcome to Devotion 11 in this Advent season. Uh, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 2 verses 9 through 12. We're actually probably going to stop at verse 11. But um, before we get started, let's pray. Father God, I pray that you would give us ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts that are soft and responsive. Lord, help us to hear what you would have us to hear today. In Jesus' name, amen. So this series of devotions is to designed to call us back to the real meaning of Christmas and to celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, the birth of God become flesh, the, the birth of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to re-anchor our celebrations in the incarnation of God. And so um, today, as we look at this, we're at Matthew chapter 2, verses 9, and it says that after they, the Magi, had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. We'll, we'll actually deal with that tomorrow, but... So the Magi have now discerned where, where the Messiah was to be born. He was to be born in Bethlehem. And so they uh, went on their way. And the star that they had seen um, was very clear to them. And it was a cause of great joy for them. Again, I'm not, I'm not ruling out a supernatural star that they saw that was um, there for a very short period of time and that was um, a marker for them. But <clears throat> I kind of think that that would have been obvious to everyone and I think a lot of people would have been asking a question about it. So I, I'm not sure that's what it is. Again, I'd recommend that you watch The uh, Star the Star of Bethlehem. It's a documentary. <clears throat> but... Then at verse 11, we come to, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we, we, we have the wise men at the manger scene in, uh, in Bethlehem. You know, that's, that's the way our crutches are and, and everything. And, and I think most, of, most people who study scripture realize that probably the Messiah, uh, the, the Magi arrived in Bethlehem sometime after Jesus was born, um, up to two years after he was born. The word for house, on coming to the house, it's not a stable that he's in. Uh, they saw the child, that's a word that would be used for still a very young child, but not a baby. And he's with his mother Mary. They bow down and they worship him. They bow down and they pay homage to him. They, they get on their face before him. And then after they get on their face before him and adore him, praise him, they open their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And this is where I wanted us to stop today. You know, in, in all the hustle and bustle of this Christmas season, this Advent season that we in the United States of America call Christmas, instead of the 12 days of Christmas being from the 25th to January 6th, we have however many days of Christmas starting all the way in July and culminating on December 25th, and then uh, it's all over. But in the hustle and bustle of this season, and as you're thinking about presenting gifts, giving gifts, buying gifts, getting gifts, receiving gifts, whatever the case may be, um, you're running around doing all that. I want you to think about something in this season. What gift can you give Jesus? 
What act of service would you devote to him to say, in honor of your birthday, I, I want to do this for you? What, what financial gift could you give to what charitable organization that could use it, whether it would be a salvation army or a gospel rescue mission or any number of other institutions that are busy serving and helping and ministering to the homeless and to the needy. What gift, either tangible or an act of service, you know, giving, giving money, giving your time, giving of yourself, going and visiting a nursing home, uh, calling on someone who shut in. What gift would you give the King of Kings? They bowed down and they worshiped him. They acknowledged him for who he is. The, the King of Kings, the the Messiah that was to be born to the nation of Israel. And they worshiped him and they gave him gifts of gold, priceless, frankincense, rare and expensive and myrrh. Oh yeah, these have symbols, you know, and, and I've heard lots of sermons on them. But I don't want to go down that road today. In this season, as we're thinking about restoring some sanity to our Christmas here in America. What gift would you give to Jesus? Father God, help us to set aside some time in an act of service or a ministry of love or to set apart some financial resource that we could give to those who are doing so. But Lord, I pray that we would first fall down and worship Jesus, for he is the King of Kings. And then as we rise, I pray that we would go forth in this season and we would give something, something very specific, something we've thought about, something we've prayed about, something that we have committed to do, I pray that we would give that to Jesus this Christmas season. And we pray, Father, that it would be a blessing and a joy to your heart. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Well, as you go today, I, I really do hope that you'll take time to pray about it, take time to think about it, take time to ask um, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, what they want you to do. But I pray that you will give a very special gift to Jesus this Christmas season.